Brahma said, O Narada, hear the story of Shiva's arrival at Kailash, the best of mountains, thanks to the power of penance of Kubera. The Lord of the universe, after bestowing the boon of Lordship of Treasures upon Kubera, returned to his excellent abode and thought within himself thus, My complete manifestation, born of Brahma, can look after the activity of dissolution. Now, assuming that form, I shall go to Kailash, the residence of Guhyakas. Rudra, born of my heart, my perfect manifestation, is the single supreme Brahman. He is worthy of being served by Vishnu, Brahma, and others. He is not different from me. He is unsullied. In that form, I shall become that friend of Kubera, shall remain near him and perform great penance. Thinking thus, Rudra, desirous of carrying out the wish of Shiva, the Supreme Brahman, sounded his drum that gave out the divine Nada. Its resonant, reverberating sound pervaded the three worlds, heightening enthusiasm and called upon everyone in diverse ways. On hearing that, Vishnu, Brahma, and other deities, sages, the persons well-versed in Agamas, Negamas, and Siddhas, Devas and Asuras came there with great delight. The Pramatas, too, reached that place from different quarters. The leaders of Ganas, revered by the whole world and of high fortune, arrived there. I shall mention to you their number. Listen attentively. The leader of the Ganas, Sankakarna came there with a crore of his ganas. Kedaraksha with ten crores and Vikrita with eight crores. Vishaka with sixty-four crores. Pariyatraka with nine crores. Sarvantaka with six crores and the glorious Dunduma with eight crores. Jalanka, the chief leader of ganas, with twelve crores the glorious Madana and Vikritanana with seven crores each, Kapalin with five crores, the auspicious Sandaraka with six crores, and Kanduka and Kundaka each with a crore, Vishtamba and Chandratapana each with eight crores, the leader of Ganas Mahakesh with a thousand crores, Kundin, Vaha, and the auspicious Parvataka with twelve crores each, Kala, Kalaka, and Mahakala, each with a hundred crores, Agnika with a hundred crores, Abhimukha with a crore, Aditya Murdha and Danavaha, each with a crore, Sanaha and Kumuda with a hundred crores, Amoga, Kolika, and Sumantraka, each with a crore. Another leader of Ganas, Kakapada, with six crores, and the Lord Santanaka, with six crores. Mahabala, Madhupinga, and Pingala, each with nine crores. Nila, Devesha, and Purnabhadra, each with ninety crores, and the strong Chaturvaktra, with seven crores. The Lord of all, Shiva reached there ready to go to Kailasha, surrounded by groups of crores, thousands, hundreds, and twenties. Kashtagudha, Sukesha, and Vrishabha, each with sixty-four crores. Chaitra, Nakulisha, and Svayam Prabhu, each with seven crores. Lokantaka, Diptatma, and the Lord Daityantaka. Lord Bringiriti and the glorious Deva Deva Priya, Ashani, Bhanuka, and Sanatana, each with sixty four crores, Nandishwara, the supreme chief of Ganas, and Mahabala, each with a hundred crores. These and other leaders of Ganas were all powerful and innumerable. They had thousand hands, matted hair, crown, etc. They had crescent moon as their embellishing decoration. They were blue-necked, three-eyed, adorned with necklaces, earrings, crowns, and other ornaments. Lords of Ganas emulating Brahma, Indra, and Vishnu, 
shining with the brilliance of cores of suns and possessed of anima, etc., reached there. The Ghana chiefs and other noble souls of spotless splendor eagerly reached there desirous of seeing Shiva. Reaching the spot, they saw Shiva, bowed to him, and eulogized him. Vishnu and others bent their heads and joined their palms in reverence. Then Lord Shiva, Vishnu, and others went to Alaka, the residence of Kubera, lovingly. Kubera and his attendants received the distinguished guest with great respect and worship him with devotion, offering him various presents. To please Shiva, he worshipped Vishnu and other devas, the ganas, and the followers of Shiva. Shiva was highly delighted, and he embraced Kubera and kissed him on the head. With all his followers, he stayed near Alaka. The Lord commanded Vishvakarma to erect buildings on the mountain for his own residence and that of his devotees and others suitably. At the bidding of Shiva, O sage, Vishvakarma immediately reached the spot and made all suitable arrangements. Then, at the request of Vishnu, Lord Shiva, who was highly delighted at the arrangements, went to Kailash after blessing Kubera and entered his residence at an auspicious hour. The Lord, being favorably disposed to his devotees, delighted everyone. Then Vishnu and other devas, the sages and siddhas, celebrated the coronation of Shiva. They approached him with various kinds of presents in their hands. With very great festivities, they performed the rite of waving lights in adoration. O sage, there was an auspicious shower of flowers. The delighted celestial damsels sang and danced in joy. Everywhere, loud shouts of victory, victory, obeisance, obeisance were raised. Everyone's enthusiasm was great. Everyone's happiness was boundless. Seated in his throne, Shiva then shone all the more. He was duly served by everyone, Lord Vishnu and others. All the devas eulogized Shiva, the benefactor of the world, with words pleasing of nature and pregnant with meaning. On hearing their hymns of praise, Shiva was highly delighted and granted their wishes. He, the Lord of all, lovingly fulfilled their cherished desires. O sage, at the bidding of Shiva they returned to their abodes. They were highly delighted since their desires were fulfilled. Then Lord Shiva asked me and Vishnu to sit down. Then he lovingly blessed us and said, Dear sons, O Vishnu Brahma, you are great favorites of mine, entrusted with the work of creation and sustenance of the three worlds. You are the best of the devas. Go back to your abodes without any fear. I shall always provide you with happiness. I shall particularly look after you both. On hearing the words of Shiva, Vishnu and I duly bowed to him, and though not delighted in leaving him, returned to our abodes. At the same time, Shiva delightfully made the Lord of Treasures sit down, and holding his hands with his own, said these auspicious words. Dear friend, I am charmed by your love. I have become your friend. Go to your place fearlessly. O oh, sincere friend, I shall always assist you. On hearing these words of Shiva, Kubera was highly delighted. At Shiva's bidding, he returned to his abode. Shiva stayed on Kailash, the best of all mountains, along with his ganas, practicing yoga and meditation at his own sweet will. In some places, he meditated upon his own soul. In some places, he practiced yoga. At times, of his own accord, he gave discourses on ancient historical tales. He, being an expert in divine sports, sported with his ganas in the different regions of the Kailasa hill. Thus, Lord Shiva, who had assumed the form of Rudra, performed the divine sports on Mount Kailash, though he was foremost among yogins. 
Thus Lord Shiva spent some time without his divine consort. After some time he married Sati, the daughter of Daksha Prajapati. Lord Shiva sported with her following the conventions of the world, O celestial sage, and he became happy. O sage, thus I have explained to you the manifestation of Shiva in the form of Rudra, his arrival at Kailash, and his friendship with Kubera, the Lord of Treasures. Thus I have explained the inner sport also, which increases perfect knowledge and confers the fulfillment of desires here and hereafter. He who reads or listens to this story attentively will enjoy all worldly pleasures here and attain salvation hereafter.